This video covers the first topic under aqueous ionic equilibria, which is buffers. So we're going to start by asking the question, what if you have an acid and its conjugate base present in a solution? So we're going to go through this with an example and a lot of these calculations should look very, very familiar to you at this point. So the first thing that we're going to look at is we're going to calculate the pH of a solution containing 0.25 molar HNO2 and 0.25 molar NaNO2. So if it's not immediately obvious that what we have is a weak acid and its conjugate base, um, you'll have to remember how to identify your weak acid. So HNO2 is not on our list of strong acids, but also you can identify it by looking at a Ka table and seeing that there is a Ka value for this acid. And then for the NaNO2, we have to look up and note that this is soluble. So the piece that is actually acting in solution is the NO2 minus. And this Na plus is just going to be a spectator ion. So we have these two components in solution. Um, one can act as an acid, one can act as a base. In order to figure out what type of reaction we're going to write, so whether we'll write something acting as an acid or acting as a base, we have to compare the Ka of the acid to the Kb of the base. So it's really similar to when you had um, salt solutions. We just have two separate components that were added that we have to compare here. So we'll look at the Ka for HNO2, which is 4.6 times 10 to the minus 4, and compare that to the Kb of NO2 minus, which remember won't be in a table, so you'll have to do a calculation to find this. And it's 2.17 times 10 to the minus 11th. So our Ka is bigger than our Kb, so the acid is stronger than the base, and we will use the acid reaction. So we mean the acid dissociation as the governing reaction. So all of the components will still be in solution, but anything we look at with regard to equilibrium will be with the acid dissociation reaction. So that means we're looking at HNO2, aqueous in equilibrium with NO2 minus, aqueous, and H plus aqueous. Now you could also show this reacting with water and then you would have H3O plus as a product. Either reaction is fine. It's totally up to you. So based on what we have here, this is our reaction, we know something about the initial conditions. So we know that it's 0.25 molar in HNO2 and 0.25 molar in NO2 minus. We don't have any H plus yet. So like any weak acid problem, we could finish out this rice table in order to find what the H plus concentration is at equilibrium, and then that would let us calculate the pH of the solution. So change, equilibrium, the reaction has to go to the right. So we can fill this in, equilibrium 0.25 minus X, 0.25 plus X, X. And if you go through here and solve for X, if you want some practice with this, um, you should save some space in your notes, and then you should be able to solve this like all of the other equilibrium problems that we've done. But if you do this, 
we find that x is equal to 4.6 times 10 to the minus fourth. And this means that the pH of the solution is equal to 3.34. So this solution, because it has the weak acid and its conjugate base in it together in similar concentrations, which we'll write as a definition a little bit later, is something called a buffer solution. And you may have done work with buffer solutions before. We're going to do some specific acid-base chemistry um, calculations and reactions with buffer solutions. So in terms of some bullet points and some definitions for buffer solutions. So they contain similar amounts of a weak acid and its conjugate base. So this similar amounts is key. So it could be a weak acid and its conjugate base. Or there's nothing saying that it can't be a weak base and its conjugate acid. And we will encounter both of these situations. So the reason that we're talking about buffer solutions and why they end up being so important biologically is that they resist changes in pH. So we will see and we will do the calculations to show that because you have some type of acid and some type of base present in solution, if you add more acid or more base, the buffer has the ability to kind of soften the blow, right? It buffers that addition and your pH doesn't change by very much. So in that solution, the weak acid that's present would neutralize any added base. And the weak base would neutralize any added acid. So because of something that we officially call the common ion effect, and we use the term common ion effect in this specific application, but the common ion effect is really a manifestation of Le Chatelier's principle. the pH of a buffer solution will be less acidic or less basic than you would expect from the pure weak acid or base. So in the reaction that we just looked at, let's highlight the common ion that we have here, which is the NO2 minus. So in our acid, it was HNO2. In equilibrium with the NO2 minus, and H plus. So essentially, 
because if we were thinking about this in terms of Le Chatelet's principle, we would talk about something at equilibrium. And then if you add, say, some NO2, the equilibrium would shift back to the left. What we're saying here with the common ion effect is that if you already have some NO2 minus present, the forward reaction won't go as far because that common ion is kind of blocking it. So it means that you don't produce as much H plus as you would if there were no common ion effect, which makes it not as acidic in this case. You would see a similar thing with a basic buffer where it wouldn't produce as much OH minus as you would expect. So we care about buffers because they resist changes in pH. So let's test that. Um, so we're gonna poke the system and see what happens. And what we're gonna do first is add some acid. And the way that we typically do these calculations is it feels kind of silly because you wouldn't be able to do this in a very practical manner in the lab. It's really nice for calculations. So we're gonna add to the buffer solution that we previously started with 0 0.01 moles of H3O plus. And we're gonna add it as a solid, which means there's no volume change, which is going to make our calculations a little bit easier to deal with. So let's get our reaction back up here. And it's the HNO2 in equilibrium with NO2 minus and H plus. And after the calculation that we did, our equilibrium point from the end of the previous calculation was that there was point two, four, nine, five, four molar HNO2, right? Started out as 2.25, but the equilibrium went forward a little bit. And that made our NO2 minus 0 0.25046. And our H plus was 4.64 times 10 to the minus fourth. So the addition of acid means that we're going to add 0 0.01 to the H3O plus. I'm not going to add anything to the other two. And so we're going to have some new initial set of conditions. This is going to look a lot like the um, quantitative Le Chatelier calculations that we did when we were just looking at equilibrium conditions. So the starting point that I'm going to have is 24954. 0 0.25046 and 0 0.01046. So to figure out which direction my reaction needs to go, you have a couple of options. So one, if you wanted to, or um, if it would make more sense to you, you could calculate Q and compare it to the Ka, which is our equilibrium constant for this reaction. Um, or we can look at this in terms of Le Chatelier's principle, which is I added a product, so my reaction that was at equilibrium is going to shift to the left in order to minimize that disturbance. So I should be making HNO2, losing NO2 minus, losing H plus. So whatever my new equilibrium set point is going to be, 24954 plus x, 25046 minus x, 01046 minus x. So we need to set this up equal to the Ka, solve for x. Um, I'm not going to show that work. You can practice with that work if you want some practice with solving equilibrium problems, but if you don't, don't worry about it because we're going to try to make this a little bit easier in a minute. So x is 0 0.00996. So just with having this value, I, I want to take a second 
and look at this and ask, how does this compare with what was added to the system? So we added 0 0.01 moles of acid. And my reaction shifted to the left and it used up 0 0.00 nine nine six moles of acid that's almost exactly 0 0.01 so the system our reaction that was at equilibrium used up or we'll say sometimes with buffer solutions it absorbed nearly all of the added acid which is good. I mean, this is why we're talking about buffer systems and it's one of the things they have the ability to do. So let's see what effect that ultimately had on the pH. So um, let's put a couple things in here. So my new equilibrium positions are that my um, HNO2, which started at 0.24954, is at 0.2595. And my NO2 minus concentration is at 0.2405. My H3O plus which started out as 4.64 times 10 to the minus fourth. Oh, I guess I have this as H plus. My H plus concentration is 5.4 times 10 to the minus fourth. That's really close to what it was initially. So my pH is 3.30. This is a very small change relative to where we started, which was 3.34. So we added 0 0.01 moles of acid, um, but the pH changed very little. It did get more acidic, right? My pH went to a smaller number, but not as much as if we had added that much acid to, say, a sample of pure water. Okay, after all of that, I want to tell you um, there has to be an easier way to solve this. So let's look at one easier way to do it. That will save you at least one set of calculations. So really what we're doing in that second problem is saying I want to add 0 0.01 moles of, I think I had it labeled H3O plus, right? This means the same thing as H plus to a buffer containing 0 0.25 molar HNO2 and 0 0.25 molar NaNO2. Okay, we've already done the previous work to figure out that we need the acid, we need the acid dissociation reaction for our rice table setup. and H plus. So then let's just say that the initial buffer conditions are 0.25 and 0.25. So, and zero. So this is where I'm starting with my buffer. I'm gonna add this 0 0.01 moles of H3O plus, and when we add it, we are going to assume all H3O plus 
reacts with the base. So if I add this, right, so I'm going to add 0 0.01, and I'm going to just draw a line here. It's going to look a little messy and not quite like the nice ice table that we usually have, but if I add acid, it's going to react completely with this base. So when that happens, all of this acid is going to go away and the same number of moles of base will go away because for every one mole of NO2, I have one mole of H plus, right? That's the stoichiometry of this reaction. Now, when those react with each other, I make 0 0.01 moles of HNO2. So that will be the actual change that happens when I add my H3O plus, and then I'll have a real new set of initial conditions, which is 0.26 molar HNO2, 0.24 molar NO2 minus, and then I can carry forward the rest of my ice table where I don't have any H plus, so my reaction has to move forward to get to equilibrium, and I could go on and solve the rest of this. 0.24 plus X and X, and where we end up is that X equals 5.4 times 10 to the minus fourth, which is great because that's what we saw earlier, which is the same as the H plus concentration. So the pH I get here is 3.30. So based on what we were saying for definition of buffers and how we're saying that buffers react when you add acid or base, this is an easier way to look at what would happen if you added an acid um, to this buffer solution. If you were adding a base, the base would react with the acid and you would see similar changes. So there has to be an even easier way to deal with this. And there absolutely is. So there's something called the Henderson-Hasselbach equation that we can use to calculate the pH of buffers. So the Henderson-Hasselbach equation is pH equals pKa plus the log of the initial concentration of the base over the initial concentration of the acid. All right, so a couple of things about Henderson-Hasselbach. Um, one, I guess a downside, this equation works only when the X is small assumption is valid. However, the great news is that that's every case that you will encounter in this class and I would say generally um, in, in biology. So downside works only when X is small is valid, but that's good enough for us. It can be used, so this is really nice, it can be used for both acidic and basic buffers. without any changes to the equation. But this means you still use a Ka value. So if you were making a buffer with ammonia and ammonium chloride, right? So a base and its conjugate acid, you would use the Ka of NH4 plus in 
the Henderson-Hasselbach equation. So that means you'd have to do an additional, additional calculation to get that Ka value. Um, there are occasionally some questions in the book about designing a buffer. So if you wanted to design a buffer, you would choose a weak acid with a pKa that's really close to the pH that you're looking for in your buffer. Or if the pH you're looking for is basic, you would look for a base that has a conjugate acid with a pKa that's near the pH that you would like to get to you. And then the base to acid ratio can be adjusted to move that pH around until it gets to your exact desired point. So it's like can be adjusted to tailor the pH. So let's go back to our original buffer solution and use the Henderson-Hasselbach equation to calculate the pH. So we're going to just calculate the pH of a buffer with 0 0.25 molar HNO2 and 0 0.25 molar Na. And O2. So the pH is equal to the pKa, so that's the negative log of the Ka, so 4.6 times 10 to the minus fourth, plus the base concentration, which was 0 0.25 molar, over the acid concentration, which is 0 0.25 molar. So the pH equals 3.34 plus the log of 1, which is 0. So my pH equals 3.34. Well, it's perfect. We got the exact same answer as we did before. We didn't have to use a rice table. We didn't have to go through all of the issues with solving an equilibrium problem. So please don't mess with all of the calculations that we started this video with. Use Henderson Hasselbach for buffer calculations. It will make your life so much easier. Um, in class, we will do some practice with once you have a buffer, if you add acid or if you add base, how you handle those situations using Henderson Hasselbach. And then, as you saw in this one, one of the special cases that you'll see is that for any buffer, if you have the same concentrations of acid and base, so if acid initial equals base initial, right? When we did this, we were taking the log of one, which is zero, then the pH is equal to the pKa. So if you wanted to design a buffer that had a pH that was exactly equal to the pKa of the weak acid that you'd chosen, you would just need to use equal concentrations of the acid and the base. And two tiny little points for us to end with. We also talk about buffers having a capacity. So under this kind of idea of quantifying the buffer capacity. So buffer capacity means just its ability to neutralize the acid or base that we're adding without having a big change in the pH. So two factors go into this, and one is concentration. So if you have a more concentrated buffer, 
meaning just that your acid concentration is stronger in this one compared to a different sample. Um, not more concentration, a more concentrated buffer can react with more acid or base. than a less concentrated buffer. And in terms of using that base to acid ratio to adjust the pH of your buffer, um, the reason that we're gonna start as close as possible to the pH and the with the pH and the pKa of the weak acid that's in solution it's because the buffer is most effective when its pH is within one unit of the pKa so in the case We'll say one unit. In the case of the system that we looked at, where the pKa was 3.34, that buffer, however we needed to adjust the base to acid ratio, would be most effective between pHs of 2.34 and 4.34. So if you want to do a little practice, use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation and go back to our example where we added acid to the buffer and see if you can get the same pH of 3.30. Um, if you don't have time, we will practice those types of calculations in class.